Y'all ready? There he is. There him is. Okay. I believe we got this right species. It feels like a big shell cracker. Yep, there he is right there. Big shell cracker. The water is cold. <laughs> and these fish are in here. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Let's lift him in here. Look at there, what a big shell cracker. That's what we're talking about. I love to catch red ear sunfish. And I love to eat them, too. Well, good morning, folks. I'm going to get this jacket off. It's starting to warm up a little bit. Uh, it's a beautiful day here on the Tennessee River. Uh, to me, it really don't matter what kind of day it is. It's a beautiful day as long as I'm out here fishing. Um, right now, the water temperature is 52 degrees on top. And I'm here in the mouth of a creek. And I'm going to fish for shellcracker and bluegill. Wintertime bluegill and shellcracker fishing to me is a lot of fun. Locating them, well, is a lot of fun. They, when it comes to river systems, it depends on the height of the water of where the fish are. A lot of times they're in the mouth of a creek. A lot of times they're in a cove. A lot of times they're in the river bends. They can be in a lot of different places in the wintertime. What I'm going to be doing is fishing with light action stuff, ultralight stuff. This is a Fluger President, a little bitty reel. It has seven ball bearings. I have it loaded with two pound test, high vis, vicious, mono, monofilament line. And right here is nothing more than a little squirrel tail jig. Um, that's a tiny, tiny, I believe that's a 1 80th of an ounce jig head with half a night crawler. Now what I'm doing, and of course I'm, I've tied it with a Palomar knot direct to that jig head. I counted the two pound line to get as much strength out of it as I can. I have my drag set light because a lot of times you can find some big shell cracker and bull gill. Um, conditions like this. A week ago, this river was six foot high, six to seven feet high. We have a lot of rain. We had a tremendous amount of rainfall, and uh, the the water levels are going down significantly. I mean, there's it might be two and a half feet high right now. It's really perfect conditions to fish for these fish. They'll gang up, oftentimes. But uh, that's what we're doing. And uh, let me show you how I'm fishing this bait. Okay, let's pitch it back there. That's where I caught that fish. About right in there. In about seven, eight feet of water. But uh, once the bait hits the bottom, which it takes a little bit of time with this light jig head. Okay, it's on the bottom now. Now all I do is just move it two or three inches and let the let the bait settle okay for a little bit just let it let it be right there move it two or three inches and just repeat that i'm just what you, what you call stitching the bait just stitching it real slow along the bottom that's all i'm doing and now the because the water temperature is still cold all you're going to feel is a tick, a real light, light bite. And a lot of times, uh, red ears or shell cracker, when they hit it, they'll just stay put. Now, bluegill will move off with it pretty quick. There's a difference in the strike a lot of times, but I don't even know if there's any bluegill in here, to be honest with y'all. I really don't know. But we'll, we'll find out. We'll fish around here a little bit and see what all is in here. There he is. Oh boy, this is a good one right here, folks. This is what we're wanting right here. Big old shell cracker. I want y'all to look what a fish. 
golly, I'm afraid to even, to be honest with y'all, I'm afraid to flip him in with this two pound line. Look here, what a shell cracker. That's what we're talking about. My, my, my. Folks, that's what I'm talking about right there. Giant, giant shell cracker. What I've done is I've moved up the river to a different place. A little deeper water. But I want you to look. Let's put him in a bucket. This is a great technique. Great technique for the winter. I want y'all to look at that. Those are good shell cracker back there. But this one absolutely drawers them others huge shell cracker i tell you what folks there's so many fish right in here i'm going to show y'all something right here okay see i'm in 10 feet of water look at the fish on that bottom those are red ears and uh i mean they're thick right there tell you what let's just put this whole night this is a small night crawler right here let's just hook him up like that right right there that looks like too big of a bait but it's not not for a shell not for a big shell cracker but it takes a while for that light light jig head to hit the bottom but the reason why i'm using sh such a light jig head they'll inhale that that um, night crawler and jig head in without detecting anything uh, odd where they'll blow it back out because shell cracker they're pretty sensitive when it comes to that you know they're especially the bigger ones a lot of times they'll blow a bait out if they feel anything that's wrong or if you put a little bit too much tension or whatever or they will in the winter time but that light jig head enables that fish to to inhale that jig head without any trouble there's one swimming right towards the boat got him they move this one now this is the size right here it is full of them right here i'll show y'all that's a pretty doggone good shell cracker, but I'm letting them go back. I mean, you could eat him if he was hungry, and he's lucky I'm not hungry, but that's the kind that is full of them in here, that size. But all I'm doing is making a long cast like that and letting that bait fall straight down once it gets to the bottom just barely barely moving it that's all i'm doing and it i mean and it won't be long and there'll be another one on there i mean that's just how thick they are a lot of times when that bait hits the bottom there's one on it okay it's on the bottom right now i'm just banging it back to me just barely moving it letting it sit there now shell cracker are notorious for feeding on the bottom. They're a little bit different than bluegill folks, or quite a bit different for the most part. All right, there's a bite right there. Let's see what's gonna happen. Right here, I missed him. That was a small one. But they're a lot different uh, than a bluegill. Their habits are. They feed a lot on, on shells, on mollusks. Uh, snails and stuff like that and they have some crushers in the back of their their throat that they'll actually when, when they get a shell in their or, or snail in their mouth a small one they'll go um, swallow it to the back side of their I'll get it out in a minute of their throat I'm focusing <laughs> and they'll crush it spit the shell out and keep the goody but they feed a lot like that. So that's why it's important to keep in contact with the bottom if you're fishing for big shell cracker. Um, and I'm gonna stress, especially in the winter time, just barely, barely moving that bait. See, it's on the bottom. Look, folks, a couple inches and then let it fall back. See, I'm done bit right there. 
one's moving off with it. There he is. Where are you going? That's a bluegill. Look at there. First bluegill I've caught. Huh. A lot of people's asked me, are these pre-spawn shellcracker and bluegill? Well, not really. What had happened right here, for the most part, when this water, a week ago, when this water got high and muddy, um, these fish just come up in here, folks, and they'll do that. And there's just a lot of fish still left in here. This fish is moving off real slow. Got him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This might be a big son of a gun here. If he ain't, he just, it's going to, hey, this might be a big one. If it, if it ain't, it's going to, oh, this is a good one right here. Look here. They, it's going to surprise me. Look here, what a shell daddy right here. Let's flip him in here. Golly. That's what we're talking about. I knew it was when I stuck him. Now, that's just a small night crawler, the whole thing. Some of them fight harder than others, too. He's not really as big as a lot of them but he just fought folks let's get back on a half night crawler a half night crawler is plenty i'm just messing around with a whole one trying to catch the biggest shell cracker in here that's <laughs> what i'm trying to do but really a half a night crawler plus that squirrel tail jig is fine for any size shell cracker it don't matter if it's a uh, two and a half pounder. I mean, old big shell daddy. That's plenty. Now, this little squirrel tail jig has a size six circle hook in it. A size six or a size eight would be the two that I would recommend um, when it comes to these jig heads, When even when it comes to these, these better fish like we're catching. Um, that's all you need. I think a size four is way too big. There's a fish right there for these pan fish. Let's see if he's still in. Yeah, that fish is there. Y'all ready? Yep. Golly. That fish, look at him. This is a good one right here. He's done strip drag twice. This is a good one. Yep, we got us another big one right here. I mean, sure enough, big one. Look here, what a fish. Oh, my goodness. Look here. You talking about some good eating. I'm going to retie my knot after this one. I've done caught several more shell crackers. Look here. Golly, bum. I want y'all to look. They, folks, look at that. That ain't nothing. Nothing but, now that jig broke. No, it come off. It come off good. Look how tall that, that fish is and how thick. Mama Sue's going to be proud of me once again. My Mama Sue, she loves me. If you got a good woman, and if they want some fish, hey, man, catch them for them. A good woman's hard to find. Let's put him in the bucket. See, that's another Jim Dant. Golly. Them are some of the biggest ones I've caught in a while, I guarantee you. And it's hard to leave right, right now. I mean, it's just hard to leave. I can't. I can't. Let's catch another one.
Hey, Tarvel, I want you to cut it out. That's enough of it. I'll rig my pole the way I want to rig it. I don't need you to tell me how to do things. I've been around for a, 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 a way over a half of a hundred years. I don't need you to tell me what I need to do and what, what I'm supposed to do. There's fish. Oh, me. Yeah, he's still there. He's just barely moving. There he Oh, my, my, my. My, my, my. Look at that fish. You talking about stretching some string, folks. I'm just going to let him fight. This is another big one. This is. This is another great good one right here. Look here. Golly. Man, oh man, oh man. I want y'all to look at that. Golly. I just can't leave. I'm just going to retie my knot after this one because look here what a fish. Y'all seeing that? I got big hands. I mean, big old Carpenter hands. Wide, big fingers, but look, if that would give you any idea how big that fish is. Huge. Oh. Fend me a little bit, too. I just can't leave. I don't think I'm going to. I might just go ahead. And... Golly. Look in there, folks. It's, this is the hardest time I've ever had about leaving. I mean, it's been years since I've had <laughs> this, this this hard of a time leaving. I'm just going to retie my knot right here and catch a few more. I just can't help it. I mean, you have to. Two-pound test line is nothing to play around with. You need a good knot, and I like there's two. Palomar knot or trilene knot. Uh, those two are the best, so I'm just going to, I don't know if y'all can see it. This line is so little, but run that line through there and then run it through there again in the same direction. I'm tying a trilene knot. Run it through there again. Keep in contact. Okay, there's a loop. See that loop? Keep in contact with it. Go around at least five times. On this little line, you can go around six or seven. It don't matter. And go through both loops like that. Now, that's a trilene knot. And you don't have to do nothing but just cinch it up and leave about an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of a tag line there because, you know, we're into some big shell cracker for two-pound line. All right, folks, let's take a look at them right there. There's 15 of them there, and I have a pair of pliers right there so y'all can uh, see how big these shell crackers really are. Well, there went one in the, in the bottom, but them are huge. You talking about some good eating. And I enjoyed that. I can't tell y'all how I enjoy it. It's killing me having to leave, but I'm a long ways from home. You know, it's a long drive out here, and um, I just had to tear away from it because when it comes to panfish, I enjoy catching bullgill and especially these big shellcracker or red ear sunfish as much, if not more, than I do crappie or bass or just about any other species. I love it, especially with two pound line and a light action reel hey they're a lot of fun powerful powerful fish if you'll match your tackle to the fish well there we go we got it done had a blessed day out here from the lord and it's a beautiful evening folks beautiful evening and there's no doubt in my mind that a squirrel tail jig just a simple squirrel tail jig like that one tipped with a night crawler the whole thing or just half is a great way to catch wintertime shell crack and bullgill i want to say god bless each and every one of y'all again thank y'all for all the great comments 
thank y'all for everything y'all do. By what I mean by that is by buying Richard Gene the fishing machine hat, hoodies, um, shirts, all that kind of stuff. I appreciate everything y'all do. Just by watching, I appreciate just all of it, folks. Uh, it's just words. It's hard for words to to for me to put it into words, but thank y'all. Hey, woo. This bucket's full. It's full of them. Oh my goodness. Shell daddies. I love to catch doggone shell daddies. Hey, man. Whoa. Whoa. And remember, go fishing when you can because it's good. Food.